Welcome to our online celebration of Easter. We're so delighted that you're with us today. We hope that you are experiencing a wonderful Easter celebration at your homes with your families. We are trying to hold as much as our tradition as we can uh, in this service today. And one of the things that is missing, of course, is Holy Communion. And we'll celebrate that as soon as we get back together. I'd like to thank Carolyn, Russell, Catherine, Lois, Mark, Rob, Anna and the Toronto Mendelssohn Choir for their gifts for us today. I hope that you will have a blessed service and a blessed day. Let us pray. All loving God, daffodils are one of the first flowers to bloom in the springtime. They symbolize rebirth and are capable of blooming even after the harshest of winters. They are teaching us and showing us that we too can bloom again after hard and difficult days. As we worship today in the safety of our own homes, I'm filled with wonder at how our gardens are beginning to grow. And I think that somehow nature is teaching us and being a teacher for us. Trees that stand so stoically in the earth, water that moves and follows a pathway, birds and animals that sing their songs for us, air that permeates everything around us, with words from Nancy Elizabeth Hardy, Great and glorious God, you have rolled away the stone and raised Christ to life. And now you invite us to share in the good news. Give us the courage to welcome the winds of change in our lives as it sweeps the sidewalks and brings hope to hungry families, released prisoners, sick and sad people of all ages. In this season of Easter, run with us in the joy of new life, 
that transforms the way we see the world and one another. For Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Winter is a time of rest and spring a time of renewal and rebirth, God. We welcome in the light, the rebirth, the awakening, and for gifts so far out of reach that we can't even fathom your greatness. As we begin to think about cleaning up our spring gardens, hands in the earth, let us be amazed and awestruck how little bulbs sitting just a few inches under the surface of the earth sit waiting patiently, growing, dividing, and then lifting out of the ground when it is safe to do so. God help us find our safe resting places on tops of mountains and at the bottoms of valleys. Show us when it is safe to walk and safe to grow and safe to come out of our homes again. God, please guide us to others who will be at our side so we can nourish each other without question or judgment and so we can learn to grow and stand on our own too. May today you imagine the sanctuary filled with our spring daffodils, remembering lives no longer with us, representing grief and growing through grief. They represent life and the courage it takes for us all to smile before, during, and after the darkness. They represent forgiveness, they are love, they are celebration, they are hands reaching out from behind and from in front. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning and a happy Easter. The scripture reading today is taken from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. And this is the story of Jesus appearing to Mary Magdalene. Reading from the Good News Bible, listen. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been taken away from the entrance. She went running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Then Peter and the other disciple went to the tomb. The two of them were running, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and saw the linen wrappings, but he did not go in. Behind him came Simon Peter, and he went straight into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, 
and the cloth which had been around Jesus' head. It was not lying in the linen wrappings, but was rolled up by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first went in, and he saw and believed. Then the disciples went back home. Mary stood crying outside the tomb. While she was still crying, she bent over and looked into the tomb and saw two angels there dressed in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and the other at the feet. Woman, why are you crying? They asked her. She answered, They have taken my Lord away, and I do not know where they have put him. Then she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who is it that you are looking for? She thought he was the gardener, so she said to him, If you took him away, sir, tell me where you have put him, and I will go there and get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and said in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Do not hold on to me, Jesus told her, because I have not yet gone back up to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them that I am returning to him who is my Father and their Father, my God and their God. So Mary Magdalene went and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and related to them what, she had, what he had told her. The sense of scripture reading, may God bless these words to our use and understanding. Once again, we hear the Easter story. The disciples go to the tomb and discover that it's empty. Mary remains behind in the garden, weeping. Someone approaches her, she assumes it's the gardener. She asks him, where have they laid Jesus so that I may take him? In that conversation between these two people, Mary begins to recognize something about this person, something familiar. And soon she realizes that it's Jesus himself that's talking to her. In their conversation, Jesus says to her, don't hold on to me. I've yet to ascend to my father. Don't hold on to me. What does John mean by using that phrase? I think what he's saying is, Jesus is telling Mary, don't hold on to an old way of relating to me. Who I am and what I stand for hasn't changed, but a new way of relating to me is coming. It's not going to be in this physical form, but it's going to be in a way that still I am very present with you throughout all time. And what I stand for and what we believe in will stand the test of time. So let go of that old way of relating to me and look for that new way to come that's already begun now. We are in that situation today. If we go to our churches this morning, they'll be empty. There's no one there. And you might think, well, then there's nothing happening. And yet we know there's something happening. We know that in the realm of the spirit, in the realm of the community spirit that we have, there is something happening. Our caring circles are growing. We are reaching out to more people than we've ever reached out to before. On Good Friday, 231 people saw our video. We couldn't even fit all those in the church. We are reaching out beyond our walls, beyond our 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 physical constraints and touching people's lives. We are going through a time now where we're isolated in our homes and yet we are still connected through the wonderful means that we have at our disposal. Through this experience, we have developed new tools. Some of us have learned new ways of being and working. We will all have new relationship tools at the end of this. We will have seen how, what we're capable of and what, how much we can do and how much we can reach out with the resources we have. And we will end up with tools to build up ourselves and our world as we move through this into a new way of being in the world. 
the Easter story of resurrection, the Easter story of celebration of new things is something that we have to look forward to even today. And that same spirit of Christ that lives throughout the ages, that is changing every time, every way in our world, but who for whose values and what Christ stands for has not changed. Values of compassion and of hope. Values of reaching out and building better community. Of caring for our creation. Those things haven't changed. So let's go, let go of the things that don't relate necessarily to those things. And let's look forward to relating to the world in a new way, in a special way holding on to those things that we now discover are important, like community, like caring for one another, no matter who we are or where we're from. As we leave and celebrate Easter this day, let's think about those opportunities we have and celebrate them. Amen.
Let us pray. Ever-loving and ever-living God, we give you thanks for the presence of Christ's Spirit within us and in our community and throughout the world, a Spirit that reaches out to others and makes difference in people's lives. We give you thanks for all those people who, through their own sacrifice, are bringing us closer to an end of this crisis. We give thanks for doctors and nurses, for custodians, for cashiers, stock clerks, truckers, farmers, and for each person who is social distancing at this time, making sure that they and their neighbours are safe. We pray for those who find it difficult, who are finding it isolating, and we pray that we would be able to reach out to them and help them cope through this difficult time. We continue to pray for the leaders of our world, that we would all work together as we are called to, to bring an end to this crisis and to bring hope to all people, not just those who have means, but also those who are poor, those who are vulnerable. We give you thanks for the beauty of creation as it springs to life through this Easter season. We pray that we would do what we can to care for it and keep it in health. We pray for those who look to you for special kinds of needs. We pray for Francis, Tom, Gwen, Betty, Anne, Jerry, and those people whom we name in our hearts before you that they might know the warmth of your love flowing in them and surrounding them. We pray that you would grant wisdom and understanding to their caregivers. We ask all this through the living Christ, our companion on the way, as we pray in the spirit of St. Francis. As I live every day, I want to be a channel for peace. May I bring love where there is hatred, and healing where there is hurt, joy where there is sadness, and hope where there is fear. I pray that I may always try to understand and comfort other people, as well as seeking comfort and understanding from them. Wherever possible, may I choose to be a light in the darkness, a help in times of need, and a caring, honest friend. And may justice, kindness, and peace flow from my heart forever. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. Please remember to click the like button and the subscribe button so that you will know when our next video is uploaded, which will be next Sunday. And as we go through this next week, let's reflect on all those ways that are bringing new life to our communities and ourselves. Let us seek ways to build on them, letting go of those things that do not serve us well, and holding on to the new ways of relating that bring love, peace, hope to our world. And we go knowing that we are surrounded by the love of God. We have the spirit within each one of us to inspire and empower us. And we have Jesus as a guide and friend. Amen. And now for something very special. Normally, we end our service with the Hallelujah Chorus, where all the congregation comes up to the front that would like to sing, and we get together and we sing this marvelous work from Handel. Well, we're trying to figure out how to do that, and we are very grateful to the Mendelssohn Choir for allowing us to use their video of a performance of the Hallelujah Chorus today. Enjoy. Oh, uh -huh.
Thank you.